Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. We're going to zoom in because this right here is very important. But we'll come back to this in a moment. I want to tell you what's been going on. Let's resume the game as well. So, I'm still disconnected from you guys and your feedback. The last few episodes have been really prob problematic. Uh, but now we've sort of hit this point where it feels like things are starting to come back into balance. And we followed through on a few principles and now things are kind of working. So one of the strange things is that our population is forever going up and down. In fact, let me show you some statistics right here. There you go, you see it went all the way up and then steadily going back down. Uh, but all of that's happened without any of this area over here being zoned out. But what I have done is managed to get all of these offices around here and massively expand our production over here. So let's go and have a look at our employment percentage. It's now at 97%. And that was down at like 60% and I just kept zoning and zoning and the workers were actually coming over here, which was something we had trouble with uh, in the beginning. And I think what's really helped with that is the demolition of this area. Uh, but anyway, you can see that it's all zoned out and there's no co-worker, I said it again, worker shortages and uh, things are going good. So everything's going good. Uh, this area over here, which I've called Monkey Island because a lot of you commented that it looks like a, a monkey face, you've got the bigger ears, I guess. Um, I have been slowly converting the residential areas into commercial, which seems to work very well. No complaints whatsoever, as you can see. Not a single bubble about goods or customers, which is fantastic. Um, but there is a problem over in this area. <clears throat> and that is that we still get these uh, shortages of raw materials. And what is that one again? Not enough buyers for products. Interesting. Um, so the only place this actually gets raw materials from is over here because of this little thing right here which I have just discovered. So I've been watching the train that comes out of here and perfect timing, it's going to go all the way down here and there's that auto save thing again, that is really annoying. And that one always comes out just in front of it as well, it's interesting uh, how in sync with one another they are. So this train then disappears but all the cargo comes out of it and that time it went into that one. Usually it goes over to this one and disappears and no cargo comes out of it. And we have a complaint bubble over here. Not enough customers right on the far side. Uh, that kind of makes sense with how isolated it is. But anyway, our population is just slowly diminishing at the moment, which is interesting. And we have this problem where we're not actually getting our goods out to anywhere. And this just might be the solution to it. So uh, I'm going to demolish this track and then we're going to find out. Now the last few episodes, have I, as I said, have been a little bit miserable. Things not going too well. And I decided what I'd do is just come on here and play slowly without thinking about recording. You know, recording puts a little bit of pressure on things because um, you're trying to make a video within a certain amount of time, like the time that you have to make that video. And I've noticed that really does kind of warp the playing experience a little, which is not something we want to do. We don't want um, these things to be determined by that. So I found some time to play casually. That's now fixed. And uh, since doing so, I found that following the natural course of the city seems to... Uh, works so much better if you've got time to really follow through with things and then see what happens. And you're going over there! What? No, we fixed the track! Maybe the next one will go over there. Oh, and that's... is that different? Am I seeing a lot more here than usual? Oh, you went straight through the uh, the bridge, that's fair enough. I think I'm seeing more traffic than usual. Anyway, we've got another one right here because there's so much stuff going to it. So where are you going? Please go into that area. Please, for the sake of my sanity, why are you going over there? I think the next challenge may have something to do uh, with these trains because they're completely disconnected and they behave so odd. You know, it comes over here and then he disappears, but no trucks have come out of here. No trucks at all. Something's definitely wrong, and I think we need to perhaps do things a little different. Like, what if we had another one of these in this area and it connected to this one, and then we only had one between there and there? That sounds like a very smart idea. I'm also going to disable this one now because that's going to cost us a lot more money. So we turn that one off. They're not happy about it. But we've got a plan, so let's try that and see what happens. So, what's been happening since we made this change, eh? Well, we uh, kind of solved our raw materials problem. That's gone away. And then we get the no workers problem coming up. Okay, that's interesting because we're now at like 98% employed. And I don't think it's really going to go above that. And if you think about how close this is to 100, it does mean that then you can have more jobs than people, right? So, that almost makes sense. Um, over here we've been shrinking again the residential area and uh, expanding the commercial but the entire time we've been doing this even though we're shrinking area over here we've got a load of area over here that they can expand into but our population is always going down. Now this little block right here and a few houses around here have popped up in the last minute or two while my population is still going down. So I don't know why we're having this constant shriek, uh, shrinkage 
it could be like a slow and steady death slump, you know, like we have a, a boom and then a fall. And judging on the size of that, the fall might be over for us soon. Hopefully it is. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting stuff and I don't really know what to make of it. But it's strange that we're expanding here while we're losing our population. I imagine the households here are getting less and less. Look at that, they're about halfway now, which is... Uh, Again, interesting. Everything is interesting because I don't know what the hell's going on, it feels like. And some low land value bubbles popping up again. Um, so yeah, we made some changes over here that fixed something and then something else got broken. And I don't really know what to do about it. What about over here? I haven't checked up on this area in a while. A few worker problems perhaps. Maybe we should downsize um, the scale of our industrial areas. So let's go and um, dezone these areas over the back here. So we're not going to do anything too drastic. Just get rid of some of the smaller places like that. And by the way, I have this problem, which is extremely annoying. You unzone and it rezones. This didn't happen too much in the last world, but on this one it's happening uh, quite frequently. So let's go and unzone this and that. Just do a little bit at a time. And over in the farm area, let's unzone these ones next to the road. All the little piggy farms and oh, some goats as well, by the looks of it. And uh, we'll get rid of that on the corner. So tiny little bit of downsizing there. We'll also do a little bit over in this area. So we'll just get rid of these things around the outside. So now there should be more uh, people available to work in this area. But who knows if that's actually going to help. Has this thing nudged? It is now at 97%. That would indicate it's done something positive. So it might take a while. Anyway, I'll probably continue with that. A small amount of downsizing as we go along. Trying to get things in the balance again. Also, my income sort of plummeted down out of nowhere without any drastic changes, which was strange. And now it's coming back up again. Fascinating stuff. You've got to get things in the balance, it looks like. So hopefully these problems get solved. So things have continued to shrink. And now we're hitting a point where we've even got residential demand here and people aren't moving in. Let's have a look at the statistics. The slump continues on. And I feel like I have no idea how to stop this. I've been reducing the size of these over here and these ones as well and considering how much I've reduced in comparison to the amount of people we've lost it seems like there are way more worker problems than there should be but there you go more problems with the game as always so for now I'm just gonna sit back let time continue on the commercial area seems alright there's the occasional building that has a little bit of trouble but in general it seems alright but yes for now I'm gonna be sitting back and watching this to see what happens because I feel kind of powerless and uh, it doesn't really feel like there's too many decisions I can make at this point other than manage the budget which is very tight and also if we bring up our vitals over here you can see yeah things are pretty close and we're not making any money anymore which is interesting considering uh, how balanced I thought the city was there for a moment maybe we can tax these buildings over here by 13% maybe that will do it since we have quite a few offices and they seem to be happy yeah, so maybe some adjustments here will help us get out of uh, the negative, but yes, just a case of uh, watching the city, I was about to say grow, but it's not, it's shrinking, isn't it? <laughs> just another quick update, I'm starting to see the death bubbles emerging in this side of the city and over here as well, although they seem to disappear again. And what I'm trying to do is up the quality of these buildings so they go all the way up to the fifth level, just working on a few demands. For example, transport is low, even though there's subways everywhere. So I'm adding in some bus lines, and of course they're not in effect because there is no bus depot. So we'll add that over here next to the university, and uh, it should get powered. And there we go, we should now see some buses go out in this area. Um, but the population is continually shrinking, and I think some of you might be thinking, why don't you zone more residential? Well, here's the thing, the population was a heck of a lot higher uh, when we had this area not fully fleshed out. And if we click on the buildings, you'll see uh, that these ones have got plenty of room for more people to build in. So zoning out new areas won't be the solution to that problem. And uh, I've tried to increase other things like fire coverage in the area and police coverage as well. And that's obviously put us further into the red. But nothing seems to be fixing this problem and the population continues to decline. Still no change, we are steadily declining, but if you go and have a look at my income over here, you can see we are way in the negative and we have lost a lot of money. That's because I've lowered the taxes and this hasn't helped at all. Let's bring that back up to 12%. So I put them down to 8 and no new people moving in, but I have now actually found out what the problem is. So if we press escape and go and look at our city statistics, you can see the decline starts around here. If we have a look at our birth rate, 
you can see the birth rate in the city has also been declining as well. But this isn't the problem right here, it's actually the influx. You can see it just flatlines and disappears completely. So it looks like your game will actually rely on people coming from outside of your city into the city to help it to continue to grow, which makes complete sense, but I've been told by quite a few people, or at least suggested in the comments and such, um, that it is possible to create a city that's entirely separated. And I think a while back we were doing a little bit of an experiment over here, and we removed this train line, and that's when people stopped coming in. So I'm going to play around with that again. You see, what we could also do is connect up one of the roads, but it seems like our city is therefore going to have to rely on people coming from the outside, which means it's going to be connected one way or another. Um, however, actually, we were connecting goods before because it's on the same line. So maybe what we should do now is just build a train station to bring people into the residential area, and then they can settle down. And that would break our rules or our challenge, you know, to some extent. But it looks like it's not going to be possible to do that without. I mean, we've made a really good area here. You can see they're all the way up to five, but there's just not enough people. And on this side, it's up to four. So we're going to connect this thing up with a train station. In fact, we're going to put it right at the end here. We can do that. Um, right now. So yeah, it'd be pretty simple. Let's just plop one down So we know what we're doing here regular train station opposite the university Oh, yeah, I threw in some bus lines as well that kind of helped upgrade the area a little bit and then we'll connect this Yeah, it'll probably branch off here come all the way down and across and then connect to the station This game is officially weird. <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention I was just sort of looking over here waiting for a train to come along no trains coming along whatsoever. What's this? I'm in the positive. What's this? There's thousands of people moving into the city. Makes no sense whatsoever because not a single train has arrived over here. Look, no one's standing at the station, but magically people are appearing in the city. So I imagine as we resume here, we're going to see those numbers fly up. We can also probably get away with changing the taxes as well. And it looks like we're going to have to adjust our budget. So before we resume, Let's, oh yeah, I'd already put that back to 12%. That makes sense now, okay. So we just got to do a little bit of uh, vital monitoring and budget adjustment. And considering we're in the positive, I'm just going to bring this up to 100% or over. There we go, so we can accommodate for the new people. And uh, I'm going to see how many people are actually going to come into the city, considering not a single train has arrived. There you go, things are definitely generated. There's definitely some sort of, you know, simulation... Um, that just creates numbers going on, that's for sure. And there we go, our first train coming into the city. And how many people does it actually have on? See, it only has 240. I don't know if that's per carriage. Um, but a full train of people coming into the city. But that's the first one, yet our population has uh, already boomed a fair bit right here. Which now means uh, we're going to be able to zone out the rest of these areas. And bring everything back to how it was. I think I found the thousands of simulated people. They're walking from the train station over here. And they're going to this bus stop. And they're standing around at this one as well. And that is just a ridiculous crowd of people. Oh, uh, this game is strange. Look, we've already shot back up to 32,000. And still shooting up. And I've just zoned like massive areas over here. So I imagine uh, these bubbles will go away pretty quickly. Zone loads of commercial as well. So uh, I guess things are getting back on their feet. Let's go and look at the city statistics. That is an enormous influx of people, like 700 odd. Even though we've gone up by 10,000, this game doesn't make sense sometimes. Yep, yeah, doesn't make any sense. So I'm still on the City Watch Patrol, so to speak. <laughs> um, a train just came in, watch this. So the people come off over here, and then something interesting happens. They come out of the building, and then cars start to appear like magic over here over there <laughs> they take them out of their pockets and they chuck them down and like that magical cars are generated oh my god <laughs> look at the size of this crowd why are we not in the third speed I don't remember changing that and it looks like a lot of trains are coming in at the moment and the crowd here is just enormous and it's not getting any smaller anytime soon by the looks of it so I've uh, increased the bus budget do you know what we could actually do? We could make like a specific route for these bits right here. Why don't we do that? Why don't we actually make a second route? So where would we want it to go? We probably want it to do pretty much the same thing as this purple line. So let's create two lines here. Um, can I create a line please? No? Am I not allowed? I'm on, I'm on the wrong thing. I'm being an idiot. Okay. Excuse me. Create a new line. So let's just create one that's going to be um, the exact same. We're going to go around like this. Over there. Over here. 
over there and then background again so we should double up the buses we should also see our uh, budget here increase from 2100 and there comes the new bus line I think maybe what color was it I've forgotten already I think it was like a cyan color and now it's buried underneath the other track isn't it or is it actually still there let's drag a stop there yep you can see it's still underneath and then we'll drag it back remove stops yes there should be some extra buses coming out uh, but no sign of the budget changing. I can't remember if that actually changes or not. But anyway, um, yeah, huge crowds. and Oh no, they're actually starting to to go down. So we can probably turn the budget on this a little bit down now. But anyway, yeah, I'm just keeping my eye on things. The main point that I wanted to make before getting distracted there is we're now up to 53,000. This game is ridiculous. Um, the city's kind of booming again. It's interesting, isn't it, how it works. But uh, at this point, I guess I'm just going to continue watching things. So we're now up to 58,000. All of a sudden, this just rocketed up right as I was about to start recording. And uh, I was going to say that this episode we learnt that you can't have a fully disconnected world. As you saw, no people come into the city and it just creates uh, a shrinkage in your population. And eventually we fix that. But anyway, um, we're now in a situation to improve and expand on the city. And I don't know why that just shot up. It really did just go all the way up. You can see here our employment percentage is down to 60%. Uh, so this area over here is going to be getting filled up. Now I was just looking at this and thinking about expansion. Maybe we could add some services around here and get some more workers in the buildings. But of course the specialist industries, they only have one bar. Is that the same for all of these? It looks like it is. So we only need to create the one and they only need um, the very bare minimum of... Uh, services and stuff so if we were to you know put some more in ones like this would go all the way up to the top but then that made me realize this bit around here isn't actually oil you can see it just falls outside of the area and so by doing this those should now change into the proper ones and also over here we should probably make the ones on this side of the road um, part of the farming industry as well and so that goes a little bit over into this side and now we just need to zone more and more areas and expand which is what this is ready for which is good because we do have some uh, raw material shortages over here quite a lot actually that has also just rocketed up and do you know what we're not actually mining a lot of ore compared to everything else now if we just have a look at the raw materials by the way we are using the mod for infinite raw materials I do get um, a lot of requests for that even though in the first episode we stated we were using it so what am I going to look at also our population just started shrinking I think we might be having a death boom from that rapid expansion that we had a moment ago um, which would explain some of the demands I guess so it could have been perhaps a little bit better we could have moved this road further out and then there would have been a tiny bit more space for all of this but that's probably gonna be it maybe we can stretch a couple of roads off the side over here or something like that and maybe create a little bit more zonage um, for this area. Zonage, making up words as always. Let's see what we can do. Now it's really steep isn't it? So maybe a road going up to that one and that's about all we're gonna get in this area. Let's zone that out quickly make sure it's inside of the area. Um, that's gonna be it for this episode. I'm now sort of catching up on the previous episodes back from my vacation and there's still a couple of episodes to come out so I'm kind of in catch-up mode. And there's tons of comments and feedback you guys have been leaving that we'll take into consideration when moving forward because now we're kind of ready, now that we've stabilized the city and learned that we can't disconnect it, uh, we can really focus on the other parts of our challenge, which is to make it all look pretty and uh, interesting. So let's zone out some more of this uh, middle area right here. Okay, so we got some of these poles in the middle. They can actually go now because the area should be well connected. So that can be one big grid. Also, why are you there? and uh, that side as well and we zone all around here as well and uh, just expand steadily. But that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you have enjoyed it. It was interesting to see what happened and uh, we learned something. It really did take a long time uh, to get through but now we're ready to move forward so things should be good. But that's it. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching this video. I have a second channel where you can find additional videos of my Twitch live streams. If you're interested in watching one of my live streams, then come over to Twitch and hit that follow button to be notified of when I go live. And if you're not subscribed over here on YouTube, then feel free to subscribe for more content like this. I also have a creative plot world server, play.assumavoid.com, where you can build on your own plot and join in the fun with our wonderful community. And if you like social media, then you can interact with me on Twitter at assumavoid.com. Links to all the relevant things can be found in the description box below.